It's the centerpiece of the 12 round Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. It packs the biggest crowd, the biggest jump, the best weather, and a July 4th celebration to boot. It's Red Bud, the race that everyone wants to win and everyone wants to watch. And we've got all the highlights of it coming up next on the Racer X Motocross Show. Welcome to Buchanan, Michigan. Sleepy little town that sure wakes up every July 4th weekend when the best motocross riders in the world come to race the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. And we'll give you the highlights of the 250 class first at this Rockstar Energy Drink Red Bud National. Jason Wygang giving it the call. Here is moto number one, Justin Barsha grabbing a whole shot of number 17, Geico Power Sports Honda. He's got Ryan Sipes in the DNA Shred Stick Star Racing Yamaha in tow. So it's a Honda leading a Yamaha, and then you know the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki boys are coming. It's Dean Wilson. He's leading Lance Vincent. Then Barsha goes down, and that hands lead over to Sipes. Quite a comeback for the Kentucky kid who only returned from injury last week. Behind him, Kawasaki boys battling for second. Wilson in front of his teammate, Blake Baggett. Baggett, got to be happy to at least be this far up early in the race. He got to watch the leaders duke it out. And then Baggett went to work. He gets around his teammate, Wilson, in a muddy off-camper section, and then zeroes in on Sipes to the lead and grabs the number one spot. Barsha would fall again. Tough moto for him, great moto for Baggett. You know if this kid starts up front, he's gonna be hard to beat. And he was unbeatable as he goes on to a first moto win over Wilson and Sipes. Moto number two, Will Hahn back in action after a broken back and shoulder, pulls a huge hole shot. But it's not to last long because unfortunately Blake Baggett had an even better start this time and it's no surprise. Baggett's gonna get into the lead. Wilson is gonna follow him through and Wilson kept his teammate honest through the first half of this photo. He was determined to finally get an overall win. Yeah, he's the points leader, but he's still winless on the year and he kept Baggett honest for the first half. But in the second half of the race, Baggett put the hammer down. He dropped three seconds off his lap time, opened up a lead, and you're looking at another 1-1 performance. That's two in a row from Lake Baggett. He's making up points, but not too many, as Tyler Rattray rallied to finish third in the second moto, even getting close to Wilson for a stretch. That's a 1-2-3 second moto for Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Dean's leading the championship and uh, he still hasn't won a national. So it just shows that the consistency pays off, you know, and uh, obviously that's what it takes to win a championship. You don't need to be the fastest, but you need to be the smartest and most consistent. And uh, that's what Dean's been doing. And uh, that's why he's got the red plate at the moment. But, uh, you know, we just reached halfway in the series and uh, still got a couple more rounds to go, but um, got some good tracks coming up. And uh, I think it's going to be some good racing all the way to the end. To be honest, I'm just uh, taking it more by more. I mean, I'm not even thinking championship right now. I mean, I may have the red plate, but that uh, can get taken away from you very fast. So I'm just, um, um, when, I mean, when I was behind him that last moto, he was kind of just, like I said, controlling the race and he slowed the race down. You know, I don't think we both were going that fast, but like I said, about halfway, he uh, picked it up and I just couldn't quite hang at that pace. He got pretty close and I kind of slowed up the race a little bit, like you said. Um, I was just kind of see if he was going to try to attack and, uh, and I kind of wanted Rattray to get right there too and, and see, uh, you know, like bottle us all up and then just sprint and try to get away from him and, uh, and see what, the, what would happen. But uh, Rattray started getting close, Dino was close, and, uh, and then I, ju I just decided, hey, it's, it's time to go and it, let's go now. And, and I was going to see if he could hang. And, uh, and I threw down and I got a little gap and I put down, I think, three laps that were quite a bit faster than, uh, than their lap times. And then I just kind of... Once I got that gap, I just kind of wrote it out. Time for the superstars of the 450 class, which would race second today after the 250s to fit into a live NBC television window. That means a little bit rougher track for these riders. How would they adapt? 
Let's check out the show. Jake Weimer on the number 32 Monster Kawasaki is going to lead them around early. He's got Davey Millsaps on the Muscle Milk Toyota JGR Yamaha right with him. Millsaps would get around Weimer, take off in the early lead with Reed and Dungey second and third. As for Villapoto, nowhere near the front. He would crash on lap one. He was 37th early. Millsaps hung on for the first half of this one in the lead, but then Reed knew it was time to go. He put the pressure on the number 18 and then is able to get around him and move into the number one spot. Dungey in third knew he needed to clear Millsaps if he wanted any chance of keeping Reed in sight, and he would do just that. He'd move into the number two spot, and on it went. Another classic Reed versus Dungey dogfight. We've seen a whole bunch of them already this se season, and this might have been the best yet. Last lap, Dungey leaps past Reed. They're side by side in the exit of this corner. They scrub the table together. Reed just able to inch back out front and hold on to win the first moto over Dungey and Millsaps. Villapoto, ninth. So, moto number two, Ryan Villapoto, he avoided complete catastrophe in the first race, but he needed a bounce back in the second one to get those points back, and that's exactly what he did. He did bounce back. He and Dungey are going to tussle for the lead early. Villapoto will just edge out Dungey in a turn two to get the lead. Reed was there in third, but Dungey made a mistake on lap one. Reed made a mistake following him, and that allowed Michael Lessie to put his KTM in front of Reed in third, and as those two battled, it allowed the Ryans to get away. Although Dungey was not quite able to hang with Villapoto in this one, the number two pulled away to win the moto and salvage something. Dungey with the 2-2 two -two is gonna get edged out, guess what, once again by Reed, who goes 1-3 to take the red butt overall. Once I got close to that single, right as I let off the, let off the gas, I just, and got on the brakes it was it was like mud that was covered up and looked dry and i just went into like just a tank slapper went over the bars over that single um thank god i didn't get hit but uh yeah i went down and had to rip my visor off um and then i got up in last and and then my pipe and everything else fell off later you know today i can't be doing that you know get being stuck behind in second and uh i need to make the passes and and, and go you know it's uh, it's important i start doing that and uh and then backing it up in the second moto as well. Obviously, I'm out there trying to ride as best I can, as fast as I can, and um, you, you control, you know, try to control the pace and try to, you know, try to put some good solid laps together. And uh, I think, you know, over the years, you, you live and learn, and you, you know where to, where to go. Eli Tate and uh, my my little sister and Laura are gonna uh, go to the Bahamas on Monday, so uh, go sip on some pina coladas and have a good time. Last week in Colorado, Jessica Patterson turned in a strong 1-1 performance, but Ashley Filek turning the tables on her with a 1-1 of her own today at Redbud. All right, so that's the action from Redbud. Let's break it down here at Brett Metcalf and the Rockstar Makita Suzuki team. First of all, just what is it like racing at Redbud? What was the track like today? We had rain, we had yeah. mud, and then it improved. So what was it like? I thought it was incredible, really, after the yep. rain yesterday. The practice one, a little muddy. But even still, it was it was delightful just to get out there, and it wasn't flooded, it wasn't a mud bog. Yeah. So, you know, obviously uh, Red Butt's always sandy, it's rough, and it was exactly that today. So it was pretty cool. They did a great job prepping the track up, I thought, and uh, turned out phenomenal. Did it almost change your strategy? I mean, it, last night were you guys thinking we're gonna have a mud race, or at least muddy practice, and then all of a yeah. sudden it changed? I, was, I mean, I slept right there, so right. all night. I was rained all day yesterday, and I still, for some crazy thought, uh, crazy reason, I just knew it was going to be good today. Oh, okay. It's like red bud, it, you can't go wrong. I okay. just knew the sun would come out, and, and it did, man. It was perfect, so I don't know why I was thinking that, but yeah, it turned out good. Now, uh, before we shot this, you were saying you've made some changes, so you're feeling good about the way your program's going. Now, what did yeah. you need to work on? Well, from where we started the season, I think coming off of missing the last half of Supercross, it's a little bit off my pace, my aggression. Things just weren't quite there, and I chose a setup that suited that style of riding. Right. And so now we, you know, we're getting going each race. I'm getting stronger, better, and understanding how to match match your speed and your level at that time. So, you know, we kind of played a little bit of chase up getting to there, but uh, right now I'm really stoked. The rough time, Makita Suzuki's working perfect, and uh, now it's on me to get up there. You know, that's where I want to be. Um, four or five today, uh, it was good, but I want to be a little closer to those guys, so. Yeah, well, the standards are set high because we know at the end of the year last year, you had a moto win basically and you were battling for it almost every week. But we know how much those three are pushing it themselves. So right. can you be there? Do you expect to be there? What do you want to do the next half of the year? 
Well, I want to be there. Yeah. Absolutely. And I do, there is a higher level of expectation this year on myself uh, after last year's performances. So, uh, you know, I do believe the last half of the season, I finished off much stronger last year. Yeah. And I'm looking, as it's progressing right now, I'm kind of heading in that direction, hopefully. So, cool. you know, hopefully we can get up there. I want to be, be with those guys. You know, it's it kind of lots of fire inside me when I hear how good the top three guys are and credit to them they are all riding incredible right they've lifted the level up and uh, you can tell just by watching so I gotta you know I gotta push my limit and uh, try and get up there with them now what's funny is yeah that we're talking about those three but you keep being in a battle every week with, with other guys it seems like no matter yeah. you and Weimer start for example we'll see you hook up how is that fun? Is it frustrating? You, you always wind up racing the same guys around yeah, how the yeah. race goes, it seems like. It's, it's, uh, it's fun because you're battling. Frustrating yeah. because you're not battling with the guys that you really want to battle right, with. Right. But you just got to take it as it comes. I mean, every year, like we were just talking, every year it seems like you get hooked up with somebody that you're equal, you're, you're level at that point. It's kind of even. You start around the same positions and it's just like you're neck and neck yes. all season long. But, you know, hopefully, you know, the guys I am racing with will keep progressing and we still got to, some room to improve on. And I know I have, so we got to do that if I want to get up, be on the box. All right. Well, we'll see if Brett Metcalf can put it up on that podium in the second half of the year. Ally uh, Sports.com for all the information on this Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. I have nothing to promote. We have a weekend off. What are you going to do, by the way? Are you going to enjoy it or are you going to put the nose to the grindstone? I'm going to enjoy a couple of days here and uh, with a little bit of family and yep. then nose to the grind, as you say. All right. We'll see Brett Metcalf and you at Spring Creek in Millville, Minnesota. Thanks for watching the Racetrex Motocross Show, Rockstar Energy Drink National at Redbud.